Hello everyone. In this video, I wanted to share uh, the different things you can do with LinkedIn.com, which is a professional networking tool where you can connect with your contacts, family, friends, professional colleagues, people you went to school with and college with, and you can use that to help you in finding a work. Um, LinkedIn is like your professional resume. You have your profile on it and people can look for you. Recruiters are on LinkedIn and they're trying to find it. Uh, it is growing a lot. Uh, I know in Canada and the US more and more people are using it and I know people in different parts of the world they are using it. So the first thing you have to do is you have to come to LinkedIn.com L-I-N-K-E-D-I-N.com if you already have an account, you put your email address and password on the top. If you are new, you need to start creating here. So I'm just going to do that just to give you an idea. I already have an account, but I'm going to use my uh, different email address to just create one. So it's always a good habit to keep your password different from your email password. The password you are entering right now that is the password for LinkedIn not for your email address they are using your email address to verify that this is you and also to use it as a way to communicate with you and I'm just going to click join now and it comes up with asking you a question about where you live and then your postal code so I'm just going to make something up and then are you employed I say you know what I'm a job seeker what is your last job title and I, I'm just going to make things up. If you are self-employed you can choose that. The name of the company, so I'm just going to type something right now. You can type your real company. The industry that the job was in, you know, it could be whatever it could be. And then the year you work there. And if you're not sure about this, just go ahead and put something there for now and you'll be able to modify it and do all the changes to it later. And click create profile now this is the step you have to be very careful because what it's trying to do is asking for my permission to go into my email account and grab all my contacts like the people I have in my address book and it's going to email everybody that I am on LinkedIn now if you like to do that you can click on continue however I don't like to do this I would rather get my profile up and going and then I'll find the people I want to connect with so if you have been receiving emails telling you that hey um, join me on LinkedIn it's not really a personal request it's an automatic request because people have given them permission a lot of them didn't even know what they were doing they were just clicking continue and a lot of time their passwords for LinkedIn and their email are same so they get into trouble I'm just gonna click skip it's gonna ask you again I'm gonna skip again now it's just I wants to say uh, we want to make sure that this is your email address now you could confirm it by this but I wouldn't do that I would just ask them to send me a confirmation email now once I go to my email I'll get a confirmation email to which I have to say this is me so I'm just gonna log into my email so I'll pause the video for a minute so I went into my email and I saw this email from LinkedIn where they wanted me to confirm it so I say click here so now I'm back into LinkedIn they've confirmed my email address and they again want to get into my email account I'm just gonna click skip skip again now they are kind of giving me an idea that oh some of these people you may already know so if you wanted to you could add them as your connection however I really don't care about it right now but if you wanted to you could I would do it later when your profile is up to date I can skip now this is for Twitter if you are on Twitter you can let everybody know that you are on LinkedIn so if you wanted to share I don't care about sharing with Twitter or Facebook at this time I can skip it and Twitter has a premium account for now we can ignore it you just need to choose the basic so now you are in LinkedIn okay the first thing you want to do on LinkedIn is you want to set up your profile so on the top you point to the word profile don't click and underneath there is an option called edit click it okay I'm just gonna close this window here now here you'll find wherever you see the edit button you can keep on changing things there so if I wanted to change my name or my industry and things like that I can do that 
you can add a photo so you can click on add a photo and then you can browse and then you can upload it um, let's see if I have something I'll just put something for now and I can upload the photo and once the photo is uploaded you'll get some options which I want to show you so that's why I'm trying to do this so once the photo comes up you can crop it, resize it, move it around and things like that and it's showing me what it will look like. I just hit save and look on the bottom here so if you wanted to control who sees your picture you can control it right here you can say that my picture should be seen by my connections these are the people you are connected with on LinkedIn just like on Facebook you can have friends on LinkedIn they call it connections so you are saying that I want to connect with this friend or a colleague or they have requested and you accepted their connections so those are your connections the other option is network network means say I know Paul so Paul is my connection Paul knows Lisa so through Paul I know Lisa so Lisa is part of my network and Lisa knows Tina so up to Tina which is the third level of connection they are part of my network or I can choose everyone so it's up to me what I want it to be I can choose that setting and I can hit save so that picture is edit I can always go back and edit things no problem okay. now I just scroll down now there is an option here on the side where it says import your resume now this will try to scan your resume and try to fill up your profile for you however I prefer to go and do it manually because this way sometimes you have to waste more time editing all the stuff so I just scroll down the first thing is a summary now the easiest way to get your profile up and going in a very short time is by having your resume ready sitting next to you so just open up your resume because there is a good chance in your resume or your, what's called the CV or your bio data you already have a summary in a cover letter so you just highlight it copy it go to click add and then just paste it here right click and paste what you copied so this is where your summary goes now the summary is exactly what is it that you are looking for so in short you want to express what have you done what is it that you want to do what is it that you are looking for it's kind of your objective and things like that so try to get really good concise to get the point across and then just hit save now the good thing is anytime you add something here you can always go back and edit it now you also have an option for experiences so this is the first thing that I had already given them the information so I can go to edit and then you can put a location if you wanted to choose the months and the year if you worked here you could just choose I currently work here and this is where the details of that job goes and then you just hit update So that's all we have to keep doing. So another position, you have to click on add a position. So for each and every position, you can click on add a position. So you can list all the last five, six jobs that you've had. Because we are not limited by space here, because it's not a one page, you can keep on adding as much as you want. The next thing is you want to add your school. So education, your high school or your diplomas or your degrees you'll be putting that information here so the name degree and the field of study and you can fill up any of the other information you want and you hit save so you can keep adding as many schools you want you have to keep using the add button they also have options where you can add your personal websites or your blog your twitter account your interest and if you have honors and awards and things like that you can add it you can also add your phone number, address, and things like that. I personally don't, but if you wanted to, you could. And then you can choose whether you want to show it to other people. There is also an option called Skills and Expertise. So this is very interesting because I can edit it and I can start adding all my skills. So these could be your customer service skills, your speaking skills, 
your Microsoft Office skills or a programming skill. So any of those things that you knew, you can start adding it. So you say if I knew Java, so I start Java and there it is, I can click it. If I was Microsoft Certified Professional or I wanted to add Microsoft Office, so I can keep adding those things here. And I just click Add. And you can always come back and edit it. So it's very important that you add that because this will help you to show up in people's searches when they are looking for you with your skills. And your connections now can come to your skills and they can click on it. That will give it like a thumbs up to you saying that, oh, this person thinks you are good at it. So they are endorsing you. So they can start endorsing you for these things. They also have an option in here called applications. So let's see if I can find it. Uh, let's scroll up. Summary, experience, skills, education. Right there, application. So if I click on add an application. So they have this. These are now third party applications which are not from LinkedIn. They are people who are doing business with LinkedIn. So if you had a reading list on Amazon that you wanted to share with people on LinkedIn, you can just install it, put, give them your username and password to Amazon and your information will show up. You want to do some polls from people. Um, you can even create PowerPoint presentations that you have professional or personal and you can share it by creating an account through SlideShare and then those presentations show up on LinkedIn. If you had a WordPress blog you can link it. If you had a Box.net account you can link your account to here. And portfolio display. For people who are into design or photography and things like that you can use this to display your portfolio and you can look into the real estate and things like that and see if any of these applications work. Once you do that they will show up in your profiles and you can edit in your edit profile and you can go back and keep on adding things. So once you keep adding all the information this number here 30 percent it will start to go up. So you want to be at least at 80, 90 percent and it's just an indication so that it you know that you've added all the important bits to your profile. So this is the first thing to do, which is a very important thing to do. Okay. Now on the top, right under my picture, there is this email link, not an email, the website link. This is like your profile link, which you can give to people, but you can edit it and you can customize it. And here, see, it says ca.linkedin.com slash in slash. I can try to type my name and most probably it's taken. So when the check mark comes up, it means it's available. So let's see. I'll just put Amir 1000. And then when the check mark comes up, that means it's available. So if I try Amir Parmar, it will say that someone's taken it because it's me who's taken it. But Parmar Amir is available and I can set it to that. So what it does is it just sets my URL to be small and I'll show it to you in a minute. The only thing I want to show you here is on the right hand side. You see, I can make my profile, public profile visible to no one if I wanted to. So this is control how you appear when people search for you on Google, Yahoo and Bing. You can show up with everything or you can show up on the searches that don't show me when people search for me. People who are logged into LinkedIn will still see you, but this will impact how people see you when they are not logged into LinkedIn and they're just looking for you. Like nowadays, when you do a, when I do a search with my name, my LinkedIn profile is the thing that shows up on the top. And then you can, if you, even if you were showing it to everyone, you can choose whether you just want to show a few things here, like your picture or your headlines or your. So there are just few things you can show by you removing the check marks. I'm going to come back to edit profile. So you see there is my link and this is the link you can use to give to people. Some people have started putting this on their resume so it's something fairly new but people have started doing this. Now sometimes you may have some certifications. Now those certifications don't go under education per se so you can click on add sections. Click on certifications and you can add it to your profile and then you can fill it up with your certifications. You can highlight some courses you've taken, honors and awards, so all of these things you have to add it to your profile and then edit it, or languages. So if I wanted I could click languages 
an add to profile they also have a thing for volunteering experiences so you can use that to highlight different things so if I want it I could click add to profile then English and if I want it I could put my other languages that I know what is my proficiency is it like really good full proficiency so you can choose that click save now I will have a language section right there and I can use this sections when I see that symbol left click and hold it and I can move it down so you see the thing got moved down so I can move it up or down to highlight whatever things I want on the top so this really finishes up the profile part now once you finish your profile you need to start connecting with people you need to connect with your friends, your families, your colleagues, and you can do a people search. You just type the name of the person here and try to find them. You can even go to advanced search if you wanted to find it by country and things like that. So let's see, I'm just going to put a generic name, John Doe. Let's see if something comes up. So there is something that comes up with John Doe. Now when you see the button which says connect, that means you can connect with that person. So say I want to connect with this person, I click it. Now it will ask me a question. It goes, hey, how do you know this John? So I click colleague. It will say, okay, choose the company where you work together. So all the company names you've listed in your profile, they'll get listed here. If you choose school, then you have to choose the school name. You've done business together. Are you a friend? If you choose other, it will force you to type John's email address because they don't want people bothering each other if you don't know. And this is the message you type. By default, that's the message, but it's always good to put some personal if you wanted to. And all you do is you hit send. So the person will receive the invitation, and now they have to accept it. If you do not, if they do not accept the invitation, that means you're not connected. And in my case, because I think some people had this email address of mine, so I can see there are some invitations waiting for me. So you can go in there, you might be surprised that there were some invitations that people had sent, which was again was automatic. They didn't actually do it because they gave permission to LinkedIn to go into their email account. Okay, so this is the work you have to do. You have to keep on connecting with people. Under contacts, connections, this is where you'll see all your connections listed. And you can use the remove connection option if you ever wanted to remove somebody from your contact list. And within contacts there's an option called add connections and then if you wanted you could actually let them into your email account your hotmail gmail yahoo and you will be able to choose who do you wanna send this invitation to if you wanted to do it faster I personally don't like to do this so this is the second task you have to do after your profile that start connecting with people now once you connect you can start getting recommendations from them so under profile there is an option called recommendations and you can request recommendations so you can choose the job that you wanted for the uh, recommendation this is your LinkedIn address book right now I don't have any contacts so whenever you have it you just put a check mark in there and you can select 200 of them at a time and then you just send the message. This is the message that goes to them. And then you hit send. So they'll get it. And then maybe they'll choose to do a recommendation for you or not. And even when they do a recommendation, you get to choose whether to show it on your profile or not. So you can allow it or not. It's up to you. There's nobody can force it onto you. And what will happen is in my view profile, when you go there, under that job, so say I got a pro recommendation for this job. I will see that recommendation and others will be able to see it too. And also when you are in edit profile, from that individual job you can ask for recommendations. But you need to make sure you are connected with people so you can request it from them. And you can give other people recommendations too. If you go to that person's profile, on that job you see a button called recommend this person and you can recommend other people too. So if you wanted to, you could do that. So that's the second thing you want to do. Contacts and start to get recommendations from people. LinkedIn also has groups. You can search for groups. So say I was looking for computer um, support 
So there it is. There are 4,800 members. Now some groups are open. Some groups are closed-ended. That means that somebody will look at your profile and decide whether you should be allowed in that group. I personally like those type of group because a lot of time these groups they have lots of ads. So you can join a group. You can even create your own group. So if I go back to groups button, there is an option to create. So this is a good way to get involved in groups, answer people's questions. You can go in and seek information from people in the in the group saying, hey, how do I go about looking for a job? This is my background. So that way you are building a relationship and maybe somebody will see that and they might offer you some options where you might be able to get a job. So this is all about networking. The next thing is jobs. You can search for jobs on LinkedIn. There are lots and lots of companies that have started putting things on LinkedIn. As soon as I come to the jobs page, based on your profile, you might already start seeing some jobs. So I'm seeing some jobs here that I can go to. I can click on it and read more about it. Or I can just come here and I can type computer support. And I click search. Now it's showing me like 1,200 jobs, but this is like all over U.S., Canada, and everywhere. So I can minimize it, reduce it by postal code if I wanted to, and then choose how many kilometers I want to go radius. I can even go down and I can just say, you know what, just show me Toronto and Canada area. So now it has reduced it, and it's come down to 394 jobs. Now what I can do is I can save the search and I can tell them that you know what send me this weekly monthly and I can save my search so I will automatically get the emails now even within these jobs say if I liked the job and I didn't have the time to look at it now I can just say hey you know what save this job or save this job so that I can look at it later and when I just go up there is the save jobs option so I can come here and I can read more about this job and there are my saved searches this is the search I saved if I didn't want it I could delete it or I can change the settings there is also an option called advanced search so you can do a little bit more and when you scroll down there is also an option to search by salary but for this you have to upgrade it that means you have to pay some money to LinkedIn per month so they will let you do this so for some people this might be useful you can do it for a short time if you think this is useful so the jobs okay, so say if I go to any of the jobs I click on it and you'll come to know more details about it there's the details and then you'll see the option to apply now either the the application will be taken from within LinkedIn sometimes they will take it from they say apply it on our, their website. Now, even if they take an application on LinkedIn, when you start filling it up, they'll ask you for your cover letter and resume, even though your profile will be attached to it. So this is a good thing because you can always customize your resume and cover letter to that particular job. Now, I just want to show you how LinkedIn contacts actually work for you when you are looking for work. So I'm just going to go to my... Um, Firefox I've been using Internet Explorer because I've logged into my actual account and here I'm just going to do a same search for computer support so this is my actual account which I already have some connections and I'm going to scroll down and I'll just say Toronto Canada area now as I do that I'll start to see something interesting you see it's showing me that two people in my network work at this company and the job about that shows me first so that means that I have some direct connections who know people that work at this company and this is networking in action so you see here it tells me eight people are working at this Globe and Mail which is like a local Toronto newspaper a national newspaper so I can now use my connections to get me an introduction to these people who work there and when I go to that job, it will show me how am I connected to these people. And this is networking in action. 
this is what is changing the game so that's why you want to make sure that you're networking you're building relationships with them I see a lot of people on LinkedIn who have like 500 connections and 500 plus connections um, and that is not bad however you want to make sure that there is some meaningful relationships here because when you are looking for a job and if these people know somebody or they happen to be working at that company depending on your relationship they will be able to recommend you or not or provide you with a reference or a recommendation okay so this is what is really important when it comes to networking so the more people you connect with the more you will start seeing these type of numbers on your job search okay so I'm just gonna come back to this so that was jobs there is an option called inbox okay. so in the inbox you can compose a message and you can use your LinkedIn address book to select the people and you can send the message to like 50 people at a time you can put a check mark in the boxes and they'll start to get added here click finish or uh, and then just write your message just remember to remove this check mark so that the recipients don't see each other's email messages email uh, addresses okay. and in the inbox this is where all the messages when people send you because you can send messages from within LinkedIn to LinkedIn and I don't even know this person so I don't know why his message is sitting here I can delete it and you see the invitations I have like five invitations waiting from some people when you had my email addresses you can do a company search so say I was looking for a company so let's see Bell Bell Canada is a telecommunication company so I typed it I click on their name so here's Bell the company has their own company page you can follow the company and you start getting updates on your home page or if you have a smartphone you get those updates and um, these are the details from Bell about what's happening with them who's getting hired and what jobs and things like that and I can go to their career section page the interesting thing is on their career page you can send a message to their recruiters so you can seek information from them you know don't ask for a job directly seek information and try to build a relationship here and you can also see some jobs okay and say if I'm looking for TD TD Canada which is a banker they have a business page I can go to career section and then there are TD recruiters and when you come to the page usually you start seeing on your side here how you may know people but based on your connections you might be connected to some people on this company so the company search which is very good to do before you look for a job you can look up if you know somebody that is there there is a news section you can get information on what's happening and news and things like that so they have some interesting articles that you can start to follow and things like that under more you have an option for the help center you can go there um, you can also go to answers where you can post your question or if you see any question here you want to answer so you can make yourself known to people that you have an expertise you can browse by different categories and the good thing about this question and answer is that you know sometimes when you are doing a Google search you really don't know whether to trust that person's answer up here once you put a question the person who answers the question you can click on their profile on their name you will go to their profile and you can see whether this person has a background in it so you can decide whether this person's um, answer has any meaning or has any value to it so that's a good way to do it and you can always search for something here and this is a nice little box because you click here you can change it to people search or job search or company search or whatever you wanted to search for so that's a good way to just switch because whenever you in the company search it automatically switches to companies but you can switch back to something else so this is where you will have to do the work to keep on getting yourself out there and connecting and connecting and connecting and getting your network up. now there are a lot of things you can do with your settings and to get to your settings you point to your name here even the sign out button is in the corner it's in your right hand corner and I go to my name and then click on settings it might ask you for your password again just go ahead and add it and now here you can change your password 
you can change and add a new email address which they usually recommend saying add another email address you can do that if you want to even you can upgrade your account from here or from here they have different plans for job seekers they have different plans for sales professional they have different plans for recruiters now this is where you come for a lot of your privacy controls and so you can click on each and every one of them and you can read more about it so like turn in on and off activity broadcast so when you make changes all of your changes are sent out as a broadcast to your contacts and they will see it on their home pages so you can remove the check mark and they are highly recommended if you were looking for a job you don't want your boss to know that you were looking at companies and jobs and applying for jobs select who can see your activity feed when I come to people's profiles I can see what they've been up to so I can choose to make it private by choosing only you select what others see when you have viewed their profile so what happens is if you go to look at somebody else's profile so say I go to look at one person's profile that person will come to know I saw them I looked at their profile so how do I want to show up? Do I want to show up with my picture and my information? Do I want to be a little bit anonymous? Or do I want to be completely anonymous? I can be completely anonymous, but then I don't, I don't get some stats which I see on my home page. If I wanted, I could do that and it's safe. Okay. Select who can see your connection. So if I come to someone's profile and I'm connected to that person, I'll be able to see all of that person's contacts so it could be a good or a bad thing like a scenario could be like say if I'm in sales and marketing and even you are in sales and marketing and we are competitors I may not want you to see my contacts and you don't want me to see your contacts so you can change the settings to only you change your profile photo and visibility which is the same setting that you get when you upload your picture if you have a Twitter account, you can add your Twitter settings to LinkedIn. So whenever you say something on Twitter, automatically comes on LinkedIn and all your contacts on LinkedIn will get this. A lot of these things are part of your edit profile. Email preferences, this is where you come. If you thought that you were getting too many emails for different things, for your groups, you can change your group settings. When you start joining groups, you start getting lots of daily emails. You can change it to no, weekly, and things like that set frequency of emails you know so you can go through this list there's a big list here you can activity notifications of other people and network updates and things like that you can change these to weekly daily no and you can save the changes LinkedIn announcement you can turn it on and off partner emails so whatever you think you're getting a lot you can come here and just change the settings groups companies and applications there's not a whole lot of here you can look into the privacy settings if you didn't want your information to be shared by third party you can choose that and also when you are logged into LinkedIn if you go to certain websites LinkedIn might start to get information about your habits and things like that so you can control those things here account this is where you come to close your account if you wanted to you can also manage your advertising preferences so you know what I might say you know what don't show me ads when I go to some other websites that you are partnered with so I can just do that so just remember the settings section whenever you wanted it and I can come back to my home page and on my home page is where I start getting all the updates like stuff will start to show up you see there are these updates automatically coming from people in Toronto and there are news and updates you can share updates about your life or about your job search with people quickly here you can share it with LinkedIn you can even share it with Twitter everybody on LinkedIn or just your connection and up here there are this all updates I can just change it to jobs so I only below there I only see updates which are about jobs rather than everything else so it's a nice little way to do that and again they're trying to get into my email account so just be careful not to hit continue and give them your password okay. so this is pretty much it uh, in terms of LinkedIn I wish you all the best and keep working on it and uh, soon you will get a job I've been seeing really good uh, results from some people who've done some work on LinkedIn and they're finding jobs very easily but this is something you'll have to keep on doing thank you for watching